Hey, wrestling fans, welcome to the One Wing Wrestling Podcast, where we help you navigate the complex world of pro wrestling, bring you the best matches, world class wrestlers, and news you can count on. At One Wing Wrestling, we bring the elite to you. My name is Christian Anaya, and joining me as always is Mr. Bill Kupush. Bill, how's it going? It is going. It is another day filled with smoke from forest fires yeah. over Toronto. Everything smells yeah. like either burnt plastic or wood fire. So <laughs> it's good times. It's good times. Um, yeah. So our air quality is like in the worst five in the entire world right now. So uh, it's, it's pretty great. Pretty great. Um, but hey, doesn't stop me from doing what I need to do. So, uh, you know, I, I do feel bad, though, for the people out there with like serious breathing problems and stuff. Yeah. This is not pleasant air. And I feel sorry for anyone that's actually affected by the fires themselves. So um, anyway, uh, on a more positive note, uh, yeah, it's nice and sunny. So, hey, mm -hmm. good stuff. How was your day? Uh, well, it's weird. I, I'm normally in the office on Wednesdays, but because I went in on Monday um, and Tuesday, I, I basically working from home for the rest of the week. So I was home today um, and uh, I got a notification um, from PlayStation that uh that uh aw fight forever was out and i was like but isn't fight forever out tomorrow so i checked i took a look at my obviously my amazon and it said hey it's going to be delivered i don't think like next week or something like that right yeah. and then i i was on some forums and stuff like that and uh people were saying hey do you know if you buy aw fight forever on playstation um on like the P playstation store you actually get the ps4 version and the ps5 version and I was like, wait a minute, that's interesting. So, so I uh, I went online and I yeah. I purchased said uh, I, I deleted I well I canceled my order for my my Amazon one, um, and I uh, I bought the PS5 version, uh, which came with the PS obviously PS4 version, and uh, yeah, I had access to it at at, uh, at the end of the day, so five o'clock, and I played Fight Forever for the past two hours. Um, and how was it? You know, at first, I was like, okay, this game's a little wonky, right? I'm like, this something's wrong. And then I realized, you know what it is? I just don't know the controls. Because I was trying to use the No Mercy controls, because that was like my favorite game. Mm -hmm. And it is the No Mercy controls. It mm -hmm. really is the No Mercy controls. But I just have to be but I just have to get used to the like some different mapping. But then when you get the hang of it, I'm like, okay, so I played like again, two hours. Yep. Um, it, it's pretty fun. I, I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I actually had some fun with it. Like getting to play as Kenny Omega, like I played as Omega, I played as Malachi. Um, you can, you know, as, as I think there's like 50 wrestlers in here, 50, mm -hmm. but we know the AEW roster has like a million, right? So, right. so when you start seeing the wrestlers who are not here, for example, Malachi's in the game. Mm -hmm. but where's buddy matthews and where <laughs> and, right, and, right. and 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 where's Brody king right so i see them releasing packs that are mm -hmm. going to come out and just uh obviously have that um fdr was one of the first packs that actually came with, with like i got the season pass for like 10 bucks extra or whatever it was um so fdr came with it and the weird part is fdr weren't put in as a tag team they, like so, so they have males females teams right? right and fdr wasn't listed as one of the teams i'm like wait a minute the good news is you can go in and edit that yes and so something you you love uh go in you can actually one <laughs> That's thing all I one do thing is play with the creative suites. yeah one, one thing you could do is you go in change the titles right mm -hmm. away so you so update titles uh oddly <laughs> i went to update the women's title and guess who's not in the game <laughs> right Tony Storm is not in here, right? So I was oh. like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yep. Chris Statler. So my first impression is I feel like this game was completed last year. And mm -hmm. the reason I say that, a lot of the things that are in it was from last year, right? Right. Well, that so makes for a lot example, of sense. Yeah. Chris Statlander mm -hmm. is still the alien Chris Statlander. And there's not an option to change her outfit. Which is really odd. Um, so, which I think is is probably going to be just like updates they they kind of pass down eventually. Mm -hmm. Again, I kind of the game feels like they want they need to get it out the door right now, right? right? And they're going to just keep giving up the updates. But regardless of like like cosmetics and all that stuff, gameplay wise, it's fun. It 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 it, it feels like a spiritual successor to No Mercy. It really does. Um, and that's what I love about it. Like there, there are some times where like, 
holy crap, that's that's pretty cool, right? That like that's some yeah. of the moves are playing. And again, I get to play as Omega. The one thing I was like, man, like I see people already making like their creator wrestlers. Um, and someone's already made like a Will Osprey on the game. They right. have all the moves and everything, so it's really really cool. Um. There's, like if you go online, you'll see a lot of people trashing the game because they're like, there aren't many, like there aren't tons of modes in here and stuff like that. But I'm mostly here for the wrestling. Like I would say, ninety nine percent, I'm here for the wrestling. The one percent, I'm here to create stuff, right? So for me, I'm like the wrestling's perfectly fine. It's not as it's not complicated like the WWE series so far. Thank God. Yeah, definitely not. Like again, like it has the heavy grapple, light grapple, and move simple what a concept imagine that right it has throw people to the turnbuckle you can pick people up you can grab it, it's it's really it seems like a, like a successor now am i saying the controls are better than no mercy i'm gonna give it time i've only played it for a, a mm-hmm. couple hours a handful of hours right. so like like two maybe two um yeah. the funny the funny part is that cody rhodes is in and I never you know that already um they have a jukebox <laughs> in the uh-huh. game where you can listen to all the themes of the, the of the wrestlers. So, for example, they have Baltimore mm-hmm. for Jungle Boy, but they don't have Mox's music. The they have his old music, which is fine. They mm-hmm. don't have they don't have the um uh whatever it's called wild, uh, thing. wild thing yeah um and some of the like orange cassidy he doesn't have his orange cassidy music that that the one I hate. Remember I said I never liked his mm-hmm. music. Yep. And it just grew on me, and now mm-hmm. they don't have it, and I'm like, sigh. Yeah. <laughs> right? But the, but these but these are things. These again, minor things. Uh, I'm I'm waiting for you to try it out as well. Um, yeah, it's I, my, so far. Mine is supposed to be delivered. I think Tuesday, Monday Tuesday. or Tuesday. Fair. Yep. It will probably show <clears throat> earlier. But um, yeah, just it, it, it's weird. If you go online, a lot of people are trashing it, saying that oh. again the modes, and I'm like, listen, I'm Ooh. having fun with it. Fresh I don't now. care. We sat next to a group of fans <laughs> watching Forbidden Door who had no freaking idea what AEW was true, and made a bunch of comments during the show. That's very true. And it's like, you know what? You pay your money. You're entitled to whatever opinion you want to form on it. You know, you have paid for the license to have an opinion. You, That's true. It doesn't mean that You're your right. opinion is right. <laughs> it doesn't mean that your opinion is based on anything remotely intelligent. It doesn't mean any of that. But you can have your opinion. Yeah, it just might be a really terrible bad one. Yeah, if so, anyone listening has figured out how to do uh, Kenny's guitar crusher, please let me know because I'm <laughs> for the life of me I can't pull it off and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, um, there is a section uh you'd probably like. There's a training session in it, so you literally can the the, the um computer just stands there and you beat them up. But I, I, I used to do that anyway because I would just put the I just put it on two player and then put the two player person standing in the ring and then practice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and even if you, I think even like I, well, to, for me to start learning, I actually I I, I drop it down to easy, mm-hmm. and it it I was having fun. I was having fun with it. Like again, I played as Chris Tatlander. Like they have signature moves and finisher moves, a lot easier to pull them off. Like literally, like you just you don't need to have like a heavy grapple and then flick the 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 stick. It's kind of like well, as long as you have it, grapple and and do your your thing, and it it does it right. Nice. So so the controls are simplified but not simplified at the same time, right? So again, we will do a review once you've played and stuff like that of the game and we'll get to that. But just a quick snapshot, I'm having fun. I'm having Good fun stuff. with it right well, that's, now. That's yeah. very encouraging. And yeah. your description is actually very encouraging to me because mm-hmm. you know you know how I game. So if you're sitting mm-hmm. there talking about that, then like you, you, what you're telling me, it's the kind of thing I can play. So that's good. Sometimes too realistic, some of these things, as in like, AEW style tag team matches get absolutely chaotic after a while. You're like, <laughs> like, is anyone nice. tagging in here? <laughs> the minute a pin happens, the, the the like the other team runs in and kicks you. You're like, what the, what the hell, man? What Dude, the hell? Just wait till the Cozy Brothers show up, okay? <laughs> the Cozy Brothers. <laughs> yeah, for, I created but, a wrestler but, but, tag team. But the weird part it says, and maybe news you want to hear, like they have, for example, like if you go to the jukebox section, they have Maki o- Maki Ito's music there already, and I'm like interesting so you know they're going to be releasing packs of wrestlers as they mm-hmm. come out and like you oh know God, this I, can play, be a new I can Japan play as pack. Maki Ito yeah you know Ooh. they go well Riho's well, they already Riho, there and they have Yuka Sakazaki and they have Yuka Sakazaki already in there yeah. right so you already have 
they have Brit, they have Thunder Rosa, they have like like most of the women. Mm-hmm. Well, not most of the women, some of them. Um, yes. Ruby's in there, but it's weird that Tony Storm isn't in there. She'll be there eventually. You know that. Maybe. Yep. Maybe. Maybe. But in spite of the fact that AEW Fight Forever is something we will definitely review later, that is not the main reason mm-hmm. we are here tonight. Tonight is AEW Dynamite. And it is the after Forbidden Door, shall we call it the hangover edition of Dynamite, perhaps? What better town to have a hangover in than Hamilton, Ontario, right? Um, <laughs> the uh, Sorry, Hamilton, but we are from Toronto. Toronto, yeah. The, uh, we, we can't put the Battle of Ontario aside for any length of time. No. Um, anyway. The uh, the show's coming stre- to us. From- sorry, sorry, Bill. Battle is a stretch there. Okay, <laughs> That's a, you're 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 kind of right. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, not, I'm, I'm not, not going to start. I'm just not joking. Start. I'm not going to start. Okay. Okay. Um. Anyway, to get back to what we were talking about, we do have a dynamite show to talk about tonight. But we also had some leftover news from Forbidden Door. We had the press conference that uh, that happened right after the show, and uh, you know, there was an intervening being the elite. We can talk about a bit too, mm-hmm. but uh, the press conference. Uh, um, we had uh, Chris Jericho interrupted uh, Darby Allen and Sting and unfortunately <laughs> accidentally hit a Injured, reporter with yeah. a water bottle. But um, barring that, uh, that's where the match for tonight got set up, The uh, which we will, of course, preview in a moment. But uh, that, of course, was the uh, Sting and Darby Allen versus the pain maker Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara in the tornado tag. So that was set up at the press conference. But I mean, other than that, did you have any comments about that no, particular the, 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 part? The Jericho thing was a total accident total absolute accident right mm-hmm. yep. um it happened tony khan got very upset if you saw his reaction yes. he's like no no he goes chris you this this is this is too much and he kicked him out as i was like but you know it, it's it's one of those things where like listen tony this is not someone going off and blasting the company or attacking somebody it was an accident he was in character yeah. he accidentally mm-hmm. did it like it, yep. it's it's yes the person got hurt a little bit but it's nothing that can you know not right. be fixed right no, so exactly. yeah so this, so this is gonna be good like i mean um i'm i'm i i'm cool with the pain maker coming back this is kind of cool for, for yep. jericho um and sammy and darby yeah I'm, this is gonna be a good match yep and we will we will be talking about it momentarily mm-hmm. but before that then we hit tony and my, okay honestly tony storm was my favorite part of this press conference and she was asked about uh, Julia's challenge and about whether or not her gear was like a throwback to her stardom gear, right? She's like, I just got new gear. It got delivered today. I wore it. <laughs> right? yeah. And then, then when she was asked about Julia, she goes, what do you want me to do? Oh, I'm so honored. <laughs> she goes, yeah. So you want me to slap the top of Julia, right? That's fine. Yeah. She goes the, like, oh, I'm so, what do you want me? What you, do I look like a mark to all of you? I, I was laughing so hard. Like, she did the whole press conference in character and it was so good but you also know we're getting tony storm and julia at some point yeah 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 no it's happening and i said that and i i think i think aew knows they dropped the ball with the stardom thing right Mm -hmm. so i wouldn't be surprised if you got uh tony storm and julia at, at at wembley I would not be shocked if you got that, right? Like a big match, put them on a big stage and stuff like that. I would not be shocked. Some things in the works, obviously, we know this. Um, uh, yeah, like, like Tony Storm is being a character was funny because this yep. is the character she needs to be. Like, this oh, is funny. Great. This is so good. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just off topic quickly, I was, uh, list- as I was working today, I was listening to a um, an interview uh, that Danhausen did mm-hmm. out of character with oh, Chris yeah? Van Vliet a year. It is it was one of the craziest things I've ever seen because all I know is Danhausen. I don't yeah. know the man behind Danhausen, right. and it's it's really interesting. But if you ever ever have a chance, look it up. Uh, Chris Van Vliet interviewed him, I think, a year ago. Yeah, fully out of character. Oh, and that's it cool. is it is wild. But and, but his story is so cool. Like you just mm-hmm. if you listen to him, he's 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 such a, a cool guy. But anyways, yeah, back mm-hmm. to the press conference. Like yeah, so I, you know I love Tony Storm, so yeah. I'm I'm cool with this. Yep. Yeah, and then we had Will Ospreay at the press conference. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, he mentioned he was working with a torn pectoral tendon. Um, he had his arm popped out by Tanahashi, talking about how banged up he was, basically. And he was saying, you know, he's not where he used to be. Uh, he'll be ending up indie dates at the end of this year. Um, they did talk a bit about his participation in Wembley. He goes, well, you know, I've got the Rev Pro thing, and, you know. <laughs> and he goes, it's up to Tony. Yeah, there so. you go. 
I yep. mean, he's going to be at Wembley. This is not even like a, anything. Like, he's going to be at Now, now, what match do I, are they going to, do I think it's too early for a Kenny Omega uh, Osprey match two, three? Maybe. Maybe it's too early for that. So maybe you put them in a tag, whatever, whatever you want to do, right? Um, but yeah, we're definitely getting Will at Wembley. There's no way we're not. Like, uh, like he, it's funny that if you listen to what he's saying, He's kind of like mimicking Kenny Omega. You know, I banged up. I don't know how much more yeah. I got in the tank. I was like, interesting. These two are so, they're so good, right? Mm-hmm. Because they 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 never break character. They never do it. And they're so subtle at their jabs at each other. And I, I, I just love it. And he didn't take any jabs. Like he, he's just, just talking about himself, right? Yep. So I, I, I'm almost guaranteeing he's been, he's going to Wembley. There's no way he's yep. not. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it would be it would be a real shame if he didn't. It would be another ball yeah. dropped. But yeah, and then we had Brian Danielson, and you know mm-hmm. he he talked about he worked a good chunk of that match, last ten minutes of it or so, with a broken arm, um, and then just kept working, uh-huh. prompting a tweet from Brie Bella that says she doesn't know whether to be incredibly angry or very proud. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, he said he also admitted later in the press conference after being pressed of it was, uh, you know, the match was changed due to his broken arm, right? Like they yeah. didn't, they didn't do the match he wanted. Um, he made, I forget the exact words. He made some comment about having to follow uh, Osprey and Omega. <laughs> and that was, uh, you, know, you know, not necessarily his favorite thing to have to do. But, uh, but yeah, I think the main thing is that Brian Danielson is out for six to eight weeks um, yeah. with a broken arm. Yeah, and and that's the sucky part, right? Like this this guy, like I remember we were there and I was like, why is he wrapping this guy? Because the way he was holding his arm mm-hmm. and wrapping um uh, Okada up, I'm like, wow, he really is selling that arm as if it hurts. <laughs> it was. Lo and behold, this guy <laughs> fought with a broken arm. Wow. Like just yeah. like if you didn't have respect for for uh Brian Danielson before, it's it's just yep. wow. Like this yeah. guy is one of the best to ever do it yeah. right well, and think about okada too suddenly being told dude my arm's messed yeah we need to wrestle the match rest- protecting my arm yeah and okada yeah. was able to pull that off too well they, well you gotta remember right? okada hit him with like two rainmakers so mm-hmm. he had to know which arm he couldn't yep. like like hold right mm-hmm. so so and you know the weird part there was a point in the match where you see okada try to grab him mm-hmm. and then he turns him yeah. And and I was like that was weird but but now when you look back at it you're yeah. like what a smart move like like yeah. like what a a good way to protect your opponent well he he's, um, he's one of the yeah. most biggest ring geniuses of all time right oh. so i mean if you're going to have two guys that can work around a broken arm in a ring and actually make it so he can last through the match without injuring the arm worse yeah. it's okada and danielson and that match was was fantastic i I, mm. I don't even know what else to say so i mean like kudos to both of them that what what a what a crazy ending mm-hmm. and and wow what like on the fly changing that match that, that yeah, was pretty i know awesome. right Could you, I, it makes me wonder what they would have given us mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. had they had the actual ending they wanted yeah so yeah, yeah i mean it, it kind of makes me go maybe someday rematch rematch exactly they, they need a rematch yeah. now and uh quick being the elite um there wasn't much on it this week there was the the fallout of course from uh, matt finally admitting that they didn't get the contract to to the guys and um you know uh, nick nick commenting to him he's going to put him through a barbershop window so uh you know oh. they're, they're they're not they're not happy um funny funny <laughs> yeah, exactly um there, there was a bit too where uh, the best friends lost on rampage and they uh they were quite upset quite upset that they lost again and they're like maybe we should be bad guys and uh then then they then they trashed ryan nemeth like they were really mean to ryan nemeth and they're like oh we can't do that and they were like they, they went off after him because you know uh, chuck did anyway he's like oh i didn't mean any of that i'm so sorry <laughs> yeah it was it was pretty funny um and then the the ending was uh, was just uh, they showed a little bit of Kenny's match with Will Ospreay, and then the whole thing just ends with the Bucks one on either side of Kenny at a bit of a distance, and Kenny just sitting there staring at the floor with his head mm. down, and that was mm. it, like just staring at the floor. So. Yeah, um, yeah. It's just, uh, I mean, you're right. Like, not too much happening. Very nope. interesting. They're playing up again. They're still playing up this whole like contract thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's after... over now. Yeah, yeah. A- after like the reports from Forbidden Door about the whole mm-hmm. fact that Punk had to be kept 
well, Punk and the Elite, including Omega, kept on separate sides of the arena. Like that's yeah, like the dressing rooms were as far away as yeah. you could humanly make them in the arena. Which, which, listen, you got to do what you got to do, right? Mm-hmm. I, I get it, I get it. Like, and hey, maybe this is for legal purposes, not like it could one hundred percent be for legal right? purposes. Exactly. Yeah. We we don't we don't know. No, um, we know nothing. That's yeah. been the problem with yeah. this whole thing. So, and we don't need to know anything. It's just no. like, hey, it happened. Um. So, like, when when I heard that, I'm like, really, like, this is what what what's happening right now. But hey, again, Tony Khan's got to run a business. That's it. If this mm-hmm. is how he has, he needs to run it. He needs this is how he needs to run it. So, yep. so I thought that's interesting. The the contract talk again came up. I, I told you this. I remember I said to you, I think they've already signed, and and I think mm-hmm. that they're just playing this up because I, there's no way I think Tony Khan would would kind of allow them to start making fun of stuff right. like this. I have a feeling they've already signed. So right. well, the the thing was Matt was like, oh, we lost this contract. And they're like, oh, okay, so we're get, we got chilies then, right? He's like, no. We lost that. One. We don't have that one anymore either. And was like, I spent like twenty three million dollars. Right? So, hilarious. Yeah, so it was hilarious. pretty. It was pretty bad. Anyway, that brings us though to tonight's the main reason we are here, which is AEW Dynamite. And as always, we're going to go through the card, um, let you know what we think is going to happen on each of these matches, and then we're going to go watch the show, come right back, and review it, and let you know. Hey, did anything we think happen happen? What about the matches? Were they as good as we thought? And did anything on the show reach the all-important Omega level? Well, we have two segments and five matches to talk about on this show from First Ontario Centre in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Um, The first segment is We Will Hear from Jungle Boy Jack Perry after his heel turn at Forbidden Door. I wonder what music he comes out to today, right? Like, Like, I mean... He's heel now. He's not going to come out to Baltimore. Or maybe he comes out to Baltimore just to troll the fans. Well, I want him to so bad. I right? want him to, like, from now on, just, like, sarcastically dance Dude. to it on the way to the ring. like Because that was what he did, right? Like, yeah. I'm, I, again, I also, I thought the the, the, the turn was so quick. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually did want them to have some, a few matches together and then turn. Yep. Um, but they did it. They they pulled the trigger on it. That's fine. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to hear what a heel Jungle Boy sounds like. Right. Mm. Like I've heard face jungle boy for my entire AEW, you yep. know, uh, watching career here. Um, mm-hmm. so I'm very curious what a heel jungle boy sounds like. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm looking forward to this just surely out of a curious factor. I'm I'm hoping yeah. that the heel persona can add that thing that's kind of missing from him right now. You know, I mean he's improved, but he's still like at that wrestling wise, he's amazing. But when it comes to like mic work and presence, he's still kind of a like a step below Darby Allen. Step below Sammy Guevara. So my question to you here, though, does he rejoin Christian Cage and Luchasaurus? Because they're bad, too. Maybe. Maybe. Right? But I think it'll depend. Like, does he need to? Does he not need to? Is he going to start talking and Hook just lays him out? (laughs) I mean, that could happen, too. We we will see, won't we? Um, And our second segment is, we will hear from MJF and Adam Cole. Now, they were both put together, so I'm assuming we're hearing from this new tag team of MJF and Adam Cole at the same time. You know, the whole trope of, you know, you put the the two uh, wrestlers who can't get get along together are forced to work together. I like this, though. I like, I, I, I don't know, there's something about this MJF and Adam Cole team. I don't, I like, like. I want them to go far in this in this tournament. I really do, right? Um, because you know they're gonna slap each other in the face and and hit each other, but they're gonna win. They're yeah. gonna win matches, right? So I'm mm-hmm. I'm more than happy to see see this, right? So yeah, yeah. I'm I, I'm ex- this this one I'm I'm curious as well. But yeah, I'm 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 more curious to see them wrestle than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm actually looking forward to this. I like this. I, I'm, and you know what? It brings me. It brings about for me the whole notion of this tag team tournament. We're supposed to get more partners announced mm-hmm. tonight, right? Okay, okay. So the whole idea of this tournament, if we get more pairings that are just completely outlandish, and we we some of the teams work, some of them don't, like mm-hmm. that kind of thing, right? Like I think this could be a lot of fun because occasionally they have matches like this in New Japan that are like random draw tag teams. Like you have four people and you draw your your partner and that kind of stuff. And and the last one I saw, which uh, was just freaking hilarious, 
All right. Like guys, guys grudgingly working together, people refusing to work. It was just, it was really, really funny and really well done. So if this is any going to be anything like that, I am on board for it. And I think MJF and Adam Cole, like this is what a way to build their feud. Mm -hmm. Like what a unique mm -hmm. way to build yeah. their feud for the title. Agreed. All right. Agreed. Well, we then have five announced matches on the show. Um, couple of uh let's see we'll start with the we'll start with the dr Britt baker dmd taking on ruby soho in a women's owen hart tournament quarterfinals match um this match is gonna be good i mean both ruby and and Britt are really good are good uh i'm just looking at the the wrestler like the, the matches tonight and i'm like like i'm just trying to figure out which is gonna be the worst match of the night like and and like i'm looking at the list some have potential. Some look like they can be pretty bad, if you, depending on what happens tonight, right? Um, I'm going to go with... You see, and the word part is it says Hangman Page and the Bucks in action. What does that mean, right? Like, that, that's what confuses me. <laughs> um, but anyways, I, I'm okay. So I'm going to say that this match, and this is not saying it's, it's bad in any way, I'm going to put this match at number five. And the only okay. reason I'm putting it at number five is based on what I'm what I'm seeing here and what could come from these other matches here. So okay. I'm playing number five, but it it, it has by all means can easily move up. I put it at number three okay. because I think okay. that uh, Britt Baker and Ruby Soho can have a hell of a match, and uh, I think they're going to. And uh, the question, of course, is you know, see, I did this last week too with the match, and I was all like, yeah, they can have a great match, and then it was like shenanigans mess, yeah. right? Yeah. And, you know, I, I was just expecting something different. And I got, I guess, what I deserved um, because uh, everyone else seemed to think that it was going to be exactly what it was. And I was the only one going, this is going to be a great concession stand brawl. And I was totally wrong. So I could be wrong here, too. This could be lots of interference, could be all kinds of crap. But if these two women have a stand up straight match, this could be really good. So I put it at number three. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So that brings us to Sting and the one that was announced on the press conference, Sting and Darby Allen taking on the pain maker, Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara in a tornado tag. So I'm going to say, I was going to put this one as number one, but I'm going to put this one as number two. Yes, number, wait, 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 wait I'm losing this. Yeah, number two. I'm going to put this one as number two. Um, I, I just, I love every everyone in this match. I mean, Sting is... is you know, he wasn't the greatest at Forbidden Door. Did oh sorry, Forbidden Door. Did you know that that um spot where Sammy hit Sting yeah. on the table? Sting was moving. Yeah. That's why remember when we said why is Sting suddenly in the ring? He was supposed to dodge that move. Yep. And and he took a blow to the head too yeah. from it. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I was like, okay. So I'm yeah, gonna I'm gonna put this yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this as uh number two. Yeah, I'm gonna put this as number two. Because okay. I love Dar Darby, I love I, I love Sammy, right? Yeah. I hope they, those they, those two can go. Um, and I'm just excited to see Chris Jericho what his what his plans are for the Painmaker gimmick. Right. I mean, it's gonna be. See, this is the problem: is that there's nothing on this card that I go, "Oh man, that's just gonna yeah. suck." And there's nothing on the yeah. card that I'm going, "Oh my god, that's just gonna blow my mind." Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. it's this is a tough card. This is like where we usually get those like the middle of the card ones, except this is a whole card full of middle of the card matches, yeah. more or less, kind of. Um, this one I put at number five. Okay. Because okay. I think one, it's going to be very chaotic. Mm -hmm. Two, I think that Sting is probably not going to wrestle very hard. Because his timing was messed toward the end we of that match, off. probably from the head yeah. blow. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think we could see it as well up where we were, as much mm -hmm. as like some of the replays I've seen since were. And like, you know, his timing just went all to hell after that hit. Um, so if he's still feeling anything, that's not going to be great. Um, you know, I, th I think all, all four of these guys can be good. Will they be? Probably. I mean, Darby Allen and Sammy Guevara can be great together. But just based on everything else I'm seeing on the card, I'm like, okay, um, you guys will probably have a great match. Tornado tags, I find this in hell. Um, yeah. So I put it at number five. Yeah, yeah. Then we have John Moxley taking on Tomohiro Ishii. I put this one as number three. I, you know, I'm not, I know this is going to be a hard-hitting match, um, but I mean, I've always thought the Ishii matches are very slow. <laughs> um and 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 I know him and Mox are gonna chop the hell out of each other. Um but 
I just figure that he you know this can be pretty good. Um, uh, but I, I also potentially could be bored at certain points of this match, right? Depending on how this match goes. So, so I'm hoping I get proved wrong. But again, I, I, I put it at number three. I, I put it at the middle. Like it can move up or it can move down, right? So I put it at number three. I have labeled this as my potential match of the night. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> because the one thing we know is if they ain't doing flips, Krishna thinks it ain't worth shit. <laughs> so... Wait to hear my match of the night. <laughs> well, of course, of course. I know already what you're going to pick is your match of the night. All you need to do is put a couple people in a ring and you're like, match of the night. <laughs> match of the night. Um, the, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. The Yeah, but you know me. I love my storytelling. I love my hard-hitting stuff. Like when two guys just start beating the living out of each other in the ring and it's like done well and done with story and done with like because both these guys can be explosive as hell with like hard hitting yeah. moves too not just chops and hits so uh yeah i think this is going to be freaking great i think they're going to kill each other um and i think that, that this is the one match to me that has an intensity that i don't see anywhere else in any of the matches on this card yeah sure jericho and sting are having a few but i'm not feeling it as anything more than like a Jericho level kind of semi comedy feud. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas this feels like two guys that want to freaking kill each other. Right. And I don't see anything else like that on tonight's card. So for me, I think the emotion going into this is what's going to make this match amazing. So then we have hangman, Adam page and the young bucks in action. <laughs> yeah. So this is the one where I'm like, so confused about, I mean, I am going to give this my match of the night. I'm going to call it my match tonight. Just because I feel like I've been betting against the Elite for a while now <laughs> since they've been facing off against the Blackpool Combat Club. I feel bad about it, but I wasn't really like having it. And then they put on such a fantastic match at the pay-per-view. I was like, yeah, I know. This is why I love these guys, right? So, you know what? I, I'm, I'm trying to fix my my wrongs. Um, I'm I'm giving them the uh, a shot at, at, at uh, uh, the match of the night. The only the only caveat I put here is like who the heck are they facing? I hate when they do this. I hate when people say the like this person is in action. So are we gonna have jobbers just come out and face them? If that's the case, then this match can easily drop way far down the list, right? Um, but I'm hoping for something really good. So I'm giving them the match of the night. Um, but we'll see. Psycho Mike, Brent Banks, and uh, Von Vertigo. That would be fun. That would be great. Really I mean, good. they're in yeah. Hamilton, right? Oh yeah. The independent talent's probably local. Oh man, I hope that I hope they bring in like Psycho Mike or someone. That'd be listen. If they bring in Charles Crowley, I will lose my mind. All right, right. but he but he works He's for probably, yeah, he works for yeah, progress. Like progress, he works well. So. I mean, generally progress and other indies yeah. in Europe generally. Yeah, but yeah, he's yeah. he's over here an awful lot. These yeah, days, so. uh, again, that's what I thought I said to you. I'm like, does he yeah, not? The, don't China? forget, we're not getting entrances, right? I mean, if they're jobbers, they're not getting entrances. Yeah, it'll just be true. already in the ring. These three guys, and then so, Kip Sabian. You don't want to do that Kip, to Charles Crowley. And then Kip Sabian would just steal Crouch Crowley's entrance and everything like that. Yeah, and the monkey. <laughs> and the monkey. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm just, I'm giving these guys. I'm, ho- I'm hoping now. Now I'm hoping that there's a some some <laughs> like Toronto talent there as well. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, uh, I gave this number four. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because even if it's jobbers, it's the young bucks. It's the young bucks. Yes, yeah, true. Right. So it can't be terrible. There's still going to be some cool stuff in it. And I think it's going to be more fun than the Jericho Sting match. Yeah. I keep calling it Jericho Sting, even though you know Darby and Sammy <laughs> Darby are in it. I, I think that, yeah. The and, and by the way, in that match too, just to flip back just from I also think that Sammy is going to finally turn on Jericho during this oh, match. Yeah, I think this okay. is going to be the one where it gets set up. So, um, or at least the turn begins to happen more. Um, anyway, to get back to this, yeah, it'll be fine. I, th- I think it'll be good. It just depends on who their opponents are. So this number four caveat could move way up if they suddenly get some really high quality opponents and uh, have an amazing match. Because I mean, it is you know the young bucks with, with Adam Page and not Kenny Omega, but you know beggars can't be choosers. Then we have recently announced Orange Cassidy. Keith Lee and El Ijo del Vikingo, one of Krishna's all-time favorite wrestlers, Boy. taking on the Jericho Appreciation Society, Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker. Yeah, I, I gave this match number four because I like people in this match, like Cassidy, like Vikingo, Garcia, 
right? I'm not sold on Keith Lee still. There's something about him. I just don't like, I think he's great, but he hasn't done anything. Right. And unfortunately, uh, Menard and Parker, they're good, but they're, they're always just buried all the time. Right. So that's why I'm like, I like, I gave it my number four spot. I'm like, I like three out of the six people. Like, sorry, I really like three out of the six people. Right. And the other, other three are good. I just wish I see more 2.0 wrestle um, besides just doing drafting commercials. Um, and like, you know, just, just, I wish for more, but yeah, I'm, that's why I gave my number four. I, but again, this match easily can move up based on the people who are here as well. Um, but Kingo wrestling a lot in AEW, eh? I, yep. I was like, okay. I'll take it. I, I like that. I yeah, will I'll, take, I'll it. take it. Yep. So I, I gave this match my number two. Okay. And I gave it my number two because I think that, I think I like Keith Lee a little more than you do in terms of his style. Um, I think he's, he's very solid. I think that his, pro- he has suffered from bad story. Yeah, um, more than anything else, because when when he was with Swerve, I mean that was like was a awesome. perfect partnership for him. He was right? awesome. Um, Matt Menard and Angela Parker, they can go, and uh, you know you put him in the ring with Orange Cassidy, you put him in the ring with like El Hijo del Vikingo, and I think we're going to be uh, pleasantly surprised at how good this can get. So, uh, and of course you have Daniel Garcia on the other side too, oh, right? So, so, good. so I think it's going to be very good. Um, but. We kind of this weird ma- batch of matches tonight where everything's kind of in the same zone. So uh, yeah. there's no match that I'm going, oh, God, this is clearly the match. Except maybe my own Mox and Ishii. I love Mox and Ishii, So, But anyway, that is our card tonight. Uh, anything you think is going to reach the Omega level? No, I, I don't. See, and here's the thing. Like, I mean, this is supposed to be the fallout from from Forbidden Door. Mm-hmm. But we're get, all we're getting is Jungle Boy talking. We're getting Cole and... Um, and mm-hmm. uh mjf right like where's kenny yeah I, I know he's doing i think he's doing press conference for the game but i mean like why isn't kenny here why isn't he talking right right uh, unless he does come out if he does then maybe we get something right right but yeah like uh, this is a this is a tough one i, I don't i don't know i don't know what yep. to say about this one yeah i don't think there's gonna be anything on the omega level yeah. so yeah anyway that is the show for tonight um sounds like it's gonna be good Mm-hmm. It, maybe not great but definitely good definitely okay. worth watching and we are going to go watch that show right now so uh we'll be gone we're going to go watch it same as hopefully the rest of you and we're going to be back but to the rest of you it's going to seem like we were never gone and that was dynamite and it came to us tonight from the first ontario center in hamilton ontario canada we had tony taz and excalibur on commentary as always and we started things right out of the gate with john moxley taking on tomohiro ishii the match i said was going to be match of the night it was not mox (laughs) comes out with the bcc story of the match was two guys who don't stay down beating the heck out of each other they started with a hard chop fest and it went from there they brawled back and forth elbows chops shoulder tackles biting you name it mox got the advantage after a shoulder tackle and the head stomps left ishii on the outside for a while at this point eddie kingston shows up he grabs a chair and he runs off Claudio and Yuta a bit, like backs them way up. Uh, Mox argues with Kingston. Kingston's telling Mox, you know, I like you, you know why I'm here. You know what I'm doing, blah, 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 right? So the match continued with Mox staying in control, though, hitting a neck breaker on the apron and continuing the beat down in the ring. Now, eventually, Ishii fires up and they went back and forth until Mox hit the gotch style pile driver for a near fall. Now, this was when the match went from, you know, Mox more or less in control, very slow match. Uh, this is where it picked up. They both started hitting each other with big moves, kicking out at one, like both of them kicking out at a one count until uh, both fall to the mat. Both were busted open at this point. Ishii kicked out of the paradigm shift. Mox nailed a cutter, but Ishii bounced up to hit a sliding lariat for two. Mox at the death rider. It was too slow to pin him and only got a two. The end came, though, when Mox finally landed a curb stomp, followed by the Death Rider for the three. And then uh, Mox bumped Kingston on the ramp on his way to the back and said, I don't need your help. And Kingston told him that uh, Mox doesn't need the BCC. What'd you think? Yeah, no, this match wasn't bad. I I actually um, didn't expect it to. Yeah, it wasn't my number one, but I I did have fun with it. The back and forth, like like, like when, when the match picked up, it picked up. Right. Um, and and, and I, I thought that, you know, overall, uh, this came in at my my number two spot. Um, and it was because it was just 
like no mistakes, nothing happened. There were some mistakes in the, in the show. Um, and uh, yeah, I just thought it it, it, it went well. Like ba- like when they started smashing their heads against you, I was like, guys, I was like, I was like, I was like and this is going to come up again. I'm, I'm like, AW, concussions are real, man. Like you don't need to do this kind of stuff, right? Like that that was a bit much. Um, but just the back and forth. I, I love how Ishii is just like so, so freaking tough. I like the, like it didn't, I like the, the fact that when Mox would hit something, Ishii would pop up and hit something else. Or mm-hmm. when when Ishii would hit something, Mox would pop up. Like, it was just constant back and forth. I had fun with this match. It was like watching Eddie and and uh, Claudio just stare each other down <laughs> the entire time. It was freaking hilarious. Um, and yeah, I didn't... Ex- I, I, I was like, well, that's weird. The, the BCC are just out here. Just interesting. I guess this is where mm-hmm. it's going to end. No. More to come. More um, to yeah, come. no, no. I, I, I gave this like the second match. I gave yeah. it my second number. Two. Me too. Me too. It was the second because once they ramped up, it was great. It was a, like mm-hmm. it, it was a little too slow, even for my taste mm-hmm. at the start. Like I'm like, oh man, if they keep this pace up, are they both exhausted or something? Because it yeah. was, seemed like really slow to me. I was like, what's going on? This is like super slow. And I realized the early slow was to get Eddie Kingston out there, right? Mm-hmm. But once they ramped this up, this match was freaking great. Yep. All right. I mean, back. I love. I love these two kind of guys going at it. Like you, like you said, the pop ups at the one counts, and then both guys are down. Right? Because like they've wasted all their adrenaline trying to pop up, and it was just it was a really solid match from that point on. You mm-hmm. know, and and the right result given where they're going with the plot line and stuff. So, but I also agree with you about the headbutt spots. But Ishii is known for these headbutts, right? I mean, yeah. he does them all the freaking time. But I just I don't think that that kind of headbutt is necessary in no. today's wrestling. No. Right. Like you just you hit all these other moves. They were great. You don't need the headbutt. I, yep. I realize it's like a, a pop whenever he hits them. But, you know, like you said, concussions are real. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then we get Renee, who is a quite busy woman on this show until uh, a particular moment, um, is in the back garage, the parking garage. <laughs> They've sent her there. And uh, Adam Cole pulls up. And then MJF pulls up and MJF uh, says to Adam Cole, gee, I wish I thought of being sick for Forbidden Door. That was genius. <laughs> and Adam Cole's like, but no, I was actually sick. So yeah, sure you were, buddy. This tournament's an opportunity for you. You're almost at my level. As a team, we could run the company. So let's hang out for the weekend. And Cole's like, sure, why not? But he says, I'm going to go say hi to some people and they'll see you around. And MJF goes, but wait, I have a gift. And that they now have a shirt that he advertises for pro wrestling tees and great show, better than you, baby. Baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Which, which, by the way, is a great name for a tag team. So I really hope that's what they call their tag team. Yeah. And the t-shirt looks cool too. And, and MJF having fun. Like, yep. this this was fun. Like, I, I agree. Like, but the weird part is we know Cole doesn't trust MGF, but MGF mm-hmm. acting like this is is actually the best part of this entire thing. Mm-hmm. Like Cole being the I don't trust him kind of guy. Yeah, it's, sorry, Cole, kind of boring to me. Um, I'm really having fun with MJF here, which is really odd for me to say, but I'm really having fun with him in this little uh setup. So yeah, I'm 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 very excited to see with how far this goes. Yep. Right. So yeah. Yeah, and it wouldn't surprise me if MJF continues to work with Cole because it's in his best interest to keep Cole away from the title, right? Mm-hmm. So the more he works with Cole, the less Cole will pay attention to the actual title. So yeah, it's it's I, I like this a lot too. I like what MJF's doing. I mean, it's the same kind of shtick he pulled with uh, with uh, Sammy, right? Mm-hmm. Like in a, a very similar fashion, anyway. But th- this is a this is an MJF that I enjoy watching. So yeah, pretty good stuff. Then we get Renee in the back now with John. Moxley, yes. that is, and Ren- and the rest of the Blackpool Combat Club, and Renee just goes, "What the hell is going on with you and Eddie?" I mean, she was she was in full on wife mode in this, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. This wasn't backstage commentator no. Renee. This was a wife yelling at her husband, and Mox goes, "You tell me that was bullshit, right?" Eddie interrupts. Eddie and Mox argue. Eddie Eddie says uh, he, you know, I'd have your back even, but you know, you're with that piece of shit, Claudio. John's like, who cares about some Chikara BS dude? That was ten years ago, and, and Eddie's like, I still cared. John storms off, and Renee turns to Eddie and just yells at him, "You better fix this. I'm done." And we don't see Renee for the rest of the show. No, we do mm. see Renee later. I'm lying to you. Sorry, mm. she does come back later, but it takes her a while. Yeah, no, this is good. I, I like how they like they're not hiding it. Like they like John Moxley and Renee 
are married. So, mm-hmm. like, of course, she's she's gonna get in the center of this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this makes it this makes it more realistic, right? Like, if you throw it in there, um, and we know where this is going, but this this is um this was this was good. This was good. I, I like mm-hmm. this. No, I, I loved this. This was this was perfect. I mean, it's it's. <laughs> I, I like the fact that that Renee just turned right. Like normally mm-hmm. she's just totally calm, cool, and collected, but this hits her like where the family is, right? If you remember uh, John Moxley talking about uh, you know his rehab and stuff like mm-hmm. that, it was it was Eddie Kingston talking to Renee and stuff that really helped him get into rehab. Mm-hmm. And you know Eddie's calling her, going, "What's going on with John?" Blah blah blah. Right. So I thought that the fact that those three have such a tight relationship. Mm-hmm. And it was brought out here because, of course, she is going to be upset. You know, this dude's like your best friend. Yep. All right. <laughs> what are you doing? So then we get a recap of Omega and Osprey. And we get quick little snippets from both of them. Omega, after the match, she just says, I didn't lose because of you, Don. I lost because Osprey was the better man. But it's not over. I'll be back. And Osprey just says, to, says in his little video, you know where we can settle this. Yeah, he says, I, I know plays. So yep. it, it kind it kind of sounds like they're gonna do it at uh, Wimbledon, I guess already. Sure, why not? Um, but yeah, no, this 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 did its job. It reminded you of what happened, and it's just chugging along this story, right? So, mm-hmm. so it looks like sounds like Wimbley is getting Omega Osprey three. Yep. And I am completely mm-hmm. fine with that. They can like if there is any pair that can fight forever. It's those two. Mm-hmm. Then we find out that Britt Baker is out because she is married to Adam Cole and somehow got the same sickness he did. Yeah. And the quarter the quarterfinal match will be next Wednesday. Ruby Soho will be in action later. Mm-hmm. Then we get Orange Cassidy, Keith Lee, and Elijo Del Vikingo taking on the Jericho Appreciation Society, Daniel Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker. Um, they, they show you how this match came about. It came about earlier today mm-hmm. because uh, earlier today, Daniel Garcia and the JAS were challenging Cassidy because he has no friends left. Best friends are in Europe, blah, blah, blah. So he has none of the usual guys that he tags with around. So Cassidy with Tony Schiavone in a dressing room, because Schiavone informs him of this. He looks around and he goes, hey, how about you? <laughs> and it's Keith Lee. And Lee's like, yeah, sure. And then he, he just goes, looks around the dressing room some more and El Hio Del Vikingo sitting there. So he picks him too. I'm like, you could not have a more orange Cassidy way to put together a random tag team than this. I absolutely loved this because, you know, like what the hell is this tag team, right? Like these three guys don't even know each other from a hole in the ground. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, I loved it. So then, also, what I loved the look Orange Cassidy gave Vikingo when he came out in his full-on gear, and Orange looks at him and just goes, "Okay, oh, yeah, whatever." <laughs> <laughs> so match starts. Vikingo takes to Garcia out of the gate, lucha style, of course, and Cassidy does his hands in pockets against 2.0. Vikingo hit a double foot stomp dive on Garcia while Cassidy had him in the bow and arrow for a pretty cool spot. Um, the heels take control though when Menard pulls Vikingo off the apron. They work over Vikingo in their corner for quite a while. Vikingo repeatedly trying to get the hot tag but being thwarted. Uh, Menard and Parker get the get a taste on him, which is a drop toe hold, big elbow drop combo, which was also pretty cool. Uh, Vikingo finally made the hot tag to Keith Lee. He drops all of them until they gang up on him, ending with Daniel Garcia getting on his back and dancing. <laughs> but Lee drops them all again. Vikingo went for a tope con hero to the outside, but 2.0 moved, and Vikingo took a nasty bump as he ran into Keith Lee. I mean, his head nailed mm-hmm. the mat. The match breaks down then around the outside, ending in Vikingo hitting a diving moonsault to 2.0. This left Garcia and Cassidy in the ring, who have a counterfilled exchange until Cassidy tags Lee. Lee fights with Renard briefly and nails the supernova for the three, and Cassidy puts the shades on Vikingo. Yeah. Um, yeah, I give this match my number three. I thought Vink- Vikingo was a star in this match by far. This guy, like, when he started moving, I was like, what am I watching right now? Right? Um, that that was a miss by Keith Lee outside. Oh, if you yeah. if, if you look carefully, he was supposed to catch Vikingo because that spot where he picks him up and he puts him back, that was supposed to be, and if you look, Vikingo actually checks on Lee to see if he's okay. Mm-hmm. Even though Lee missed him and Vikingo was the one that hit the floor. And I was like, Are you kidding me right now? Like, come on. I, I get it. I get it, but that total, total miss. And Vikingo, it's not like 
he didn't give Lee enough time to set up. Right. right? He he looked he looked and he kept looking back and forth and did it. I I really thought that could have been a lot worse because if you look, he hits Lee right in the forehead and like mm-hmm. you see a little scratch down his face yep. and he checks on him to see if he's okay. But that was a total Lee miss. Um, I, I had so much fun in this match, so much fun. I thought the match was was so fun except for that botch. Um, again, hey, what happened to Keith Lee and his gray hair? Why is it dyed suddenly? <laughs> Right. I'm just asking questions. You know, I thought that was his new gimmick. Right. Be who you yeah. want to be. Yeah, I totally agree. But why did you go back? Anyway, yeah, exactly. Um, again, I love this match. Thought it was fantastic. But I gave it my number three match yep. Um, because that that spill, it really did. I'm like, that could have been a lot worse than it looked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I listen, Daniel Garcia and 2.0 were fantastic in this in this um, match. Like the 2.0, it, it, you really never do get to see them wrestle the way they mm-hmm. can. And those tag team moves were great. Daniel Garcia, freaking just the dancing on Keith Lee's back and everything. Like that. I couldn't stop laughing. This guy, this is his persona. I don't care about this. You're a wrestler thing. They, that can go on forever. He needs to remain as this person. And I actually hope this is actually his personality because if it is, yeah. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Right. So, so give my, my match number three. Again, the match so far, the two matches we just talked about, I really enjoyed them. Yep. I really did. So, yeah. Not a bad show so far. Oh yeah, no, I, I enjoyed this match a lot too. It was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, the, the of course the middle part where you know 2.0 had control. I mean, they did some cool moves, a little bit slower. That was fine, but it told it told like a decent story around mm-hmm. that. But you know, right, the Kingo was the star. Cassidy kind of got a bit of the night off. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he deservedly he, he did, he, so. Yeah, deservedly so. Yeah, he didn't he didn't have to go as hard as he has been no. recently. No. This kind of gave him a bit of a break. Lee was fresh. You know, Vikingo is Vikingo. So. Yeah, it was. Um, this was like the Vikingo show until you know 100%. Lee, of course, has to finish them off at the end. <laughs> but uh, and of course, dude, I watched that spot like four times. I'm like, it, 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 what the hell happened? Were they supposed right? to like, do exactly? Going. Yeah, and Lee was out of position. He should have been mm-hmm. forward slightly more to be able mm-hmm. to catch him better. I think. And um, and you know, he just he missed and he totally Vikingo missed. Totally missed. Totally missed. His head on the ground. Uh, on the and ground. you're right. Then Vikingo's like, "Are you okay? Are you okay?" He, know, he knows his foot collided with his face, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but yeah. hey, they saved it pretty well. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Lee was like, you know, Lee is a savvy ring vet, right? Yeah. I mean, he's been around a long time, and and he was able to 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 save that spot pretty mm-hmm. damn fast. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, yeah, it brings the match down just slightly. But I mean, saw the match. I had a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. ending was fine you yeah. know and i love Cassidy with the glasses of the kingo i'm like that's right Cassidy. first bandito <laughs> now the kingo now you the keep kingo. going with these uh yeah. great partners right so then we get the elite in the back and uh, they're like brandon you're rolling yeah he is and uh hangman issues a trios open challenge and the dark order shows up and they're like yeah okay we want to fight and hangman just laughs he's like okay what you want like a 12 way whatever and reynolds is like no we're serious we want to fight and evil luna says you haven't talked to us for ages nothing and then you went off with them you abandoned us for them and hangman like at this point the bucks have backed off and hangman's like it's not about them and you they needed help against the blackpool combat club Am I responsible for you? Am I your babysitter? And Uno flips. He's mm-hmm. like, is that what you thought? We were your friends. We were there at your lowest point. But tonight we're not friends. We're your opponents. Yeah. That, it, the Dark Order is 100% correct. This is uh, they, they were there for Hangman when no one was there for him. And suddenly he totally abandoned them. So I was like, okay it's coming full circle now all right <laughs> yep i was like holy crap i am so cheering for the dark order mm-hmm. now because mm-hmm. they're right i mean tell tell me where they were telling lies right yeah, it, <laughs> sound, it sounded like uh, hamilton was cheering for them as well when we get to that match yep, so. some some points of it for sure but yeah this was this was this was some awesome stuff mm-hmm. all right i mean this was this was some really good emotional buildup, and all of a sudden i was super excited for the elite yep. match tonight right then we get a video recap of Danielson versus Okada and a video recap of Jack Perry's heel turn. And then Renee is back. She has now calmed down. And uh, she's in the back with Jericho and Guevara. And Renee's like, you're the pain maker tonight. And Jericho's like, well, Sting and Jericho were in the ring for the first time. This is bigger. You know, we should be on TBS, commentated by Tony Schiavone. 
tonight you get your nightmare jericho's primordial ooze the pain maker and she's like sammy and sammy just nods mm-hmm. that was it yeah that was it yeah no yeah. it's good that's good no jericho's i love jericho like he, he's his when he's in character he's in character and like he didn't flinch he didn't laugh he didn't joke he was just no. serious the entire time so i liked yep. it yep He's the pain. Well, the pain maker is serious, mm-hmm. right? Don't, don't forget, he did play that, uh, you know, the the man in the suit gimmick for a long time, where he never smiled at anything. So he's very good at the whole, like, you know, keeping a persona thing. So then we get the Dark Order: John Silver, Alex Reynolds, and Evil Uno taking on the Elite: Hangman, Adam Page, Matt, and Nick Jackson. Um, did you see the Elite's tag on their on the screen? Like when their their banner comes up, I forget oh. the thing at the bottom. It said on it, "We'll never financially recover from this." <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It was pretty great. It was pretty yeah. great. I laughed. I was like, "Holy crap! Are you kidding me?" So then, but Nick didn't take the match too seriously to start. He was laughing with Reynolds, yelling "Lucha Libre" as he did a springboard yep. arm springboard arm drag. He was just like, "Whatever, these guys are a joke, right?" But the tone changed when Silver called out Hangman, and they argued before looking up, right? And then mm-hmm. they go back and forth grappling. But when Silver elbows him, Page tags out. He mm-hmm. doesn't want to fight Silver, and that's the story for the vast majority of the match. Hangman refusing to tag in. And when he was in the match, he wouldn't actually fight. He'd do like a couple little things and get the heck out of there. And the Bucks fought the Dark Order for most of it. At one point, uh, Uno yells at Hangman to get in the ring. But Hangman's like, it's not a fight. It's a match. And he mm-hmm. jumps off the apron. Mm-hmm. Hangman wouldn't attack a downed Reynolds and tags in Matt. The Bucks work over Reynolds with, pay- with Page avoiding anything resembling a tag for quite a while. Uh, Reynolds finally manages to hit Nick with a knee, gets the hot tag to Uno. But then Uno just goes over and gets in Hangman's face and slaps him, yelling at him to fight. And Hangman finally tags in and fights Uno. They uh, they beat the Dark Order beats down the Bucks on the outside though, leaving Hangman with Silver and Reynolds who hit their move flurry for a huge near fall. They go for the pendulum bomb, but, bomb, but the Bucks interfere, taking out Uno and Reynolds. Hangman sets up for the Buck shot, but he hesitates, mm-hmm. and Silver almost got him with a roll up for an absolutely massive near fall. I say that because I bit one hundred percent on this near fall. But then Hangman hits the dead eye. The Bucks hit the BTE trigger. Hangman hits the Buckshot, and it's the three. I'll yeah, get to the is, aftermatch after the. Yeah, this was my match of the night, just because like like these six guys, right? Like the, the, it got to a boiling point. I'm glad they didn't abandon this story. I really am glad they didn't abandon the story because everything the Dark Order said was right. Everything they said, and they went after Hangman. They really, and I love Adam Page in this in, in, in this match. Like he tried and tried and tried to to not fight them. He did not want to get in. He avoided even when he got punched. He didn't want to. He didn't want to go in. He didn't want to go in until Uno started punching him in the face a couple times, and finally he snapped. Right, so he played that perfectly. Uh, the Bucks are just side characters in this. They really were. This was the story of Hangman and, and the the Dark Order. Um, and it seems to be over now, right? So, so um, uh, yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this match. Uh, my match of the night, like, just great, great. They, they told the full story just in the ring. And, and yeah, it kind of sucks that Hangman and the Dark Order seem to be over with now. Right. I think you're wrong that it's over. Ooh, <clears throat> okay. But, okay, okay. Um, no, my match of the night, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, this match was all emotion right um really good match like the wrestling was good Mm -hmm. i am not going to go so far as to say this was an absolutely spectacular wrestling match and i'll get to that in a minute but the storytelling with hangman and the dark order made this match and they all did it to perfection i mean this was this was storytelling that like kept up a plot that's been burning in the background for months and Mm -hmm. it finally came to this right yeah and i thought this was amazing right now my nitpicking and these are nitpicks but my one problem with the match was that the bucks started off kind of laughing like they were almost like they had two stories to tell here and they did one really well and then completely dropped the other one right because matt and nick acted like they weren't taking the Dark Order seriously. They weren't taking them seriously in the promo. They weren't taking them seriously when the match started. But 
they end up getting the vast majority of the offense on them. And there's no kind of like point where they go, oh, maybe we should have taken these guys seriously. Yeah. All right. That never happens in the match. Right. Yeah. And and I think that for the story to be really effective, the Bucks needed to stop being fun bucks and needed to be, oh shit, these guys are actually better than we mm-hmm. thought bucks. Mm-hmm. Right. These aren't just his secondary buddies or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's the one thing I didn't like about this was I didn't like how that story kind of started because the match started like that yeah. and then never got picked up. So to me, that was bad storytelling in amongst a really, really good story. All right. Um, and I know it's tough to tell us two stories at the same time, but you know, um, but that to me, honestly, mild nitpick match of the night. Um, I loved it. And then after the match, well, the BCC jumps the elite yet again. again yep. You know, Mox nails Paige with the screwdriver, busting him open. The Dark Order bails and just walks back up mm. the ramp, not helping uh, the elite at all. To question, Callus show up, then Kingston comes running down past the Dark Order for the save, but the BCC wrecks him too. Hangman is like seen pleading with the Dark Order to come and help with blood pouring down his face, but the Dark Order just stares at him and walks off the stage to the back. Um, then Mox grabs a mic and declares that they will have blood and guts on July 19th in Boston. Yeah, yeah, this is good. This is really, really, really well done. Um, the Black Bull Combat Club is just, just, just destroying people, right? Um, Mox is kind of the leader right now because obviously Danielson is 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 going to be away for a bit. Um, I I just love the the image of Hangman reaching out towards the Dark Order and they're just sta- they're staring at him, mm-hmm. right? And, and and you know what? There there's no reason why they should help at this point, right? Because yep. they feel absolutely betrayed by this guy. So I love I love the way that this was this story was told because mm-hmm. they're they're still getting the Blackpool Combat Club. Because remember. Hangman said it was about, about the Blackpool Combat Club. It was never about them, right? Yep. Um, that's why he he was helping them. We'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But yeah, right. this this was this was this was good. This is good. Yep. Because these are three guys who are totally loyal to their family member, Hangman Adam Page. <laughs> There's another guy who might need a family. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. There, there, there is. Yo, didn't Takesha look so awesome, man? Oh my god, does that, he ever? He looks like an assassin in that leather jacket. I was like, holy, yep. this guy looks. He looks like an like an eighties bad guy, like he's standing. Oh yeah, his jacket I know, on. right? Like, like totally eighties right. bad guy. He's just going to absolutely kill Destroy you. you. When, yeah, and he, he does. So he cool. backs up everything he does. So cool. Right? So yeah. cool. So yeah, I enjoyed this. I, I oh, really yeah. did enjoy this. Oh yeah, and the bl- blood and guts between these eight guys. Yeah, that's that's going to be pretty great. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see how uh, Mox and uh, Eddie do in this match. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of stories to tell here. There's a lot mm-hmm. of stories to tell here, and it's really good. And um, yeah, this is the best thing happening in AEW right now. So uh, so way to go, guys. Way to go. Good stuff. And we get a recap of Punk with Kojima. And then short promos from Samoa Joe, Roderick Strong, Powerhouse Hobbs, Dustin Rhodes, uh, Juice Robinson, and uh, Ricky Starks. All of them just kind of hyping up their own position in the tournament because they're uh, all six of them are having matches on Collision in, being taped tomorrow for Saturday. Yeah, I, I saw that that graphic fl- like flash on screen, and I'm like, yep. okay, tomorrow. All right. Yep. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, these were fine. Any yeah, comments? Okay. Yeah. Oh, they're okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. They're pretty generic. Yeah. I'm going to win promos. Even, even Samoa Joe. Right, exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. Then we got Adam Cole and Roderick Strong in the parking lot. And Roderick Strong says, can't trust, trust MJF. Adam And Adam Cole's like, I know. Then MJF shows up and goes, what's up, generic white guy? <laughs> and I just about died laughing. Yep, he says, ah, I'm just joking with you. Blah, blah. Let's get out of here, he says to Cole. And MJF leaves with Cole. This was, this was good. This is fun. Like when he said, what's up, generic white guy? I could not stop laughing because all I could think about was create a wrestler. And Mm -hmm. he was generic, create a wrestler guy. Right. And I'm like, oh, like, and he's like, no, man, you're, you're, you're pretty buff. You're pretty strong. Right. I'm like, I'm just such, 
jerk. I love it. But it was, yeah. you know, this was this was awesome. Yeah, no, it was it was great. It was great. It did what it needed to do, and they left together. So the story continues. So then Jack Perry comes out. He comes out to his old music, but he immediately stops it and calls it garbage. And he informs the crowd, you've all ruined that song for me, so we're never going to hear it again. Booing won't change the fact. And then I saw the sign of the night. I held it up and it said, I was saying boo earns. (laughs) Amazing. Yep. So Jungle Boy gets in the ring. I'm sorry, I should call him Jack Perry now because I'm pretty Mm -hmm. sure he's dropping the Jungle Boy now. Uh, Jack Perry gets in the ring and goes, look, I'm cashing checks. I'm young and I got a hot girlfriend. I'm not going to repeat exactly what he said. He asked Toronto if he turned on Hook or Hook turned on him. He was robbed of two world championships while an entitled second generation prick waves his championship in his face. And that bell doesn't even recognize, just like he doesn't recognize Hook, who he calls a fraud. Hook was lucky to stand next to him in a ring. He's a former world champ, but he knows what that title means to Hook and his family, so he's going to take it from him. And then Hook comes out. Perry runs away. Commentators claim Perry can't outrun him, so then we see them run in the back. Perry jumps in an SUV, though, and it races off. So Hook then decides to make life difficult for the first Ontario Centre Cleaning crew. Yep. Yeah, tosses a trash can. Yeah, um, you know, well, what was Jack Perry like lying about? He is with the one of the hottest girls in AEW, right? Anna J. So I mean, hey, good good for him. Um yeah, you know, the thing about Jack Perry is that we've seen him in the in the the good as like the the face character for such a long time when you start seeing him the heel character i'm like it's it still sounds very scripted you know what i mean like i i i'm not sensing the the realism the passion's not there and listen he needs to hang out some more with christian let christian teach him some of some of his tricks on on how to how to like like get the crowd like just booing you and say what you need to say because yeah he said a couple things i'm like okay sure Okay, I guess you're bad. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I expected a little bit more, but like, it was just, to me, it was just okay. Was it? Yeah. I mean, I, I got about what I expected out of him, to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't dislike this. I thought, I thought, you know, not, not a bad job for like a first heel promo. Um, I think he, he is still going to continue to suffer from, I don't know what it is. Like he needs to find that thing in him Mm -hmm. that he can exaggerate to be a heel you know like he just he he needed a team with mjf i think he needed to be with mjf like that would yeah that would have been good because mjf would like him just siding with the devil i guess at that point it was like yeah but then mjf's doing all the talking yeah that's true he needs to talk that's why even putting him with christian's a bad idea because then he's just he's got another person talking for him right I, i think i think he needs some time you know and um you know i'm hoping what he might do is tap into something like just find some part of himself that's not very nice and use it because we all have that side that we could tap into if we wanted to right we've all got an inner asshole somewhere so yeah just just uh, well okay maybe not the dalai Lama, but i mean if you're not (laughs) the dalai Lama, you you know you somewhere in there you've got an inner asshole use it then I don't know if this was a commercial break or not, but Sammy Guevara came out with cue cards. Yeah, commercial break. Okay. So basically the cue card said as follows. He and Darby are eternal adversaries. They will fight forever. Yeah. I, 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 obviously, they're they're hyping up the, the game fight forever. Hence right. the fight forever part. But I do like the idea of him and Darby being eternal adversaries. Yeah. I think that is a great idea because mm-hmm. every company needs some eternal foes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whether it's Starlight Kid and Izumi, or if it's Darby Allen and uh, Sammy Guevara. Who? Yeah, I know. Sorry, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara. No, he says yeah. Starlight Kid. Is that like kid wrestling? Like baby wrestling? Like what? What is this? What is it? Starlight Kid? I don't even know what this is. What is this? Do, do yourself a favor. Google how fast her latest shirt sold out. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's a girl. I'm just kidding. Um. Yeah, I mean, like, if you, like if you think about it, like the sting, if like, I mean the sting and Jericho thing, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you couldn't, I wouldn't call them adversaries, but they've been in the game for a very long time, and mm-hmm. like if, if you look at that last match, which we're going to talk about, it's like you're seeing the 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 past, not really the past, but you're uh, you're seeing the past and you're seeing the future, right? Of mm-hmm. of what could be, and and 
The future looks bright. Is that what I'm saying? Yes, the future looks very bright. And that's what I mean. These two guys as like eternal foes. I should keep saying eternal adversaries or eternal foes will be reserved for the two that are eternal foes, Azumi and Starlight Kid. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, by the way, Taz uh, advises on commentary that he is still angry. Okay. And then Tony suggests that he punch Excalibur. <laughs> <They're> so, <funny>. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get Ruby Soho coming up for her match and she is taking on Alexia Nicole, who, if you guys listen to our shows, know that she lost her Femme Fatales championship on the weekend to one Nicole Matthews in what was an absolutely outstanding wrestling match. Um, she is an incredible wrestler, high flying stuff. Very, I remember saying stuff all hits, very crisp, mm-hmm. dead on stuff. She looks great in the ring. Um, you know, she is a real serious wrestling talent. And she gets squashed pretty much by Ruby Soho in a couple moments and taps out to the lockjaw of all things after getting hit with a couple of backdrop drivers. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no offense at all. Not a single move out of Alexia Nicole, which is just too bad because these two women actually could have had a hell of a wrestling match. I mean, sure, Soho could have dominated the hell out of her, but you gave her zero. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, that yeah. was pathetic to me. I mean, a woman that good deserved a lot more than she got. Yeah, but we I knew it was gonna be the minute that I that that uh, I saw her and mm-hmm. the minute that I I I um we knew Britt wasn't coming out, I knew this was a squash match. I knew it was a squash match, like it was going to be a squash match, and and I figured it was it was gonna be one like this. So it didn't surprise me. I just I'm like, oh yeah, I know her. I saw her at the event on uh, Sunday. Uh, but yeah, this match, I mean, because it was a squash match, I guess my number five spot. Um, uh, and yeah, that, 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 that's about it. the match was really short. That's it. Squash match. Yep. Me too. Five. Because yeah. Alexia deserved better. That's all I have to say. Give her one move. One move. One move. <laughs> she can be squashed, but one move. Anyway, Ruby gets a mic. Canada got Brit sick. The next week she can challenge because the rookies around here get whatever they want, even when they don't show up for matches. Uh, Britt said Ruby didn't know herself back in the past, but now Ruby loves who she is. Last year, Britt barely beat her on her best day. Now they took everything from Britt, and next week she's going to take her opportunity to be a two-time winner away and leave her with nothing. Nothing. Yeah, this is fine. I I I, I think Ruby Silva does like she speaks well, um, and um, she can play the heel character pretty pretty good mm-hmm. so I, I i didn't have any any complaints about this i thought this was good i thought it was a good challenge they, they blamed um obviously canada for getting her sick oh, um uh uh you know she, she's like uh she's what did she, what did she say she said she doesn't think adam cole and brit should have any kids because because they'd be the weakest things on the earth right. so so you know i i enjoyed that as well but yeah no this is this was fine i liked it Mm-hmm. No, it was, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was great. It was good for what it needed to do. Mm-hmm. Built the match. And I like how it referred to like the previous year and stuff. And I was just going to get her this time. Well, then we, then we get a recap of Rampage where we discovered that Harley Cameron was in fact the only human being on the face of the planet that did not know that Anthony Bowens is gay. Apparently. Yeah. And the crowd had to inform her that Anthony Bowens is in fact gay. Okay. QTV, then we get in the back. Johnny TV is in production. <laughs> QTV and Johnny TV always make the hits, and they will be fighting Matt Hardy and um, Brother uh, Zeke. Brother Zay. Brother yeah. Zay. Yeah. Brother Zeke. <laughs> Brother Zay on uh, Rampage, I believe. Yeah. 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 No, I think I'm glad to see John Morrison or Johnny TV here now. He's been signed with to a- 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 AEW. Um, Wasn't so he signed great. ages back, though? No, he, he showed up and he was like Johnny or like he did a, and and but I don't know if he was actually signed. But I think now he's actually signed. They were reporting he's actually signed now with AW. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm glad I, I like I like John Morrison. I think he's a great wrestler. Um, it's I'm very curious to see how he's going to be with QTV and Johnny TV. I think that might be a, a great character for him. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what's going to happen here. Yes. No, I, I think this will be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm all in for this kind of fun. This kind of fun is good fun. Yep. So, yes. Sadly, though, I think they're going to be feuding with the acclaimed. That won't be as good of fun. Nope. 
So we get two more teams. Okay, so Excalibur does his giant exhale. But the one point I want to make out of his giant exhale is we got two more teams announced for the tournament. We have Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland are a team. That's interesting. Yep. That's interesting. And then we have Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen, and these two teams will be fighting each other on Dynamite. Hmm. That's interesting. I really think that's interesting because, like, do they let Keith Lee and Swerve win this match? Because remember, Lee and Swerve were really at the tops when when they were a tag team. But mm-hmm. Swerve has the mogul embassy now, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, how does this factor into any, anything, right? Keith Lee uh, would make a great member of the mogul embassy. That's all I have to say. He would. He would. So, so maybe but we'll see. I, I, yep. I'm just happy to see them in tag team again. Yes. That'll be cool. But Chris, Krishna, I got questions. Mm-hmm. I got lots of questions. Mm-hmm. Is this a quarterfinal? Is this a semifinal? Is this oh, a pre quarterfinal? Is this, would someone give us some freaking brackets for this tag team thing? I mean, we get two more random teams announced. How many teams are there? How yeah. many can we expect? What's the point of this tournament? Why are we just getting these matches announced willy nilly? This is like one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. This could be really cool, but give us the brackets yeah. and the teams, the whole tournament, lay it out. Give me the brackets. And the, I want to know what the hell's going on. Going on this is yeah. dumb what every week we're just getting some random people fighting each other because like someone thought it was a good idea and like eventually they'll think about how this tournament's supposed to be booked i guess yeah. like this this just feels like like really lazy work at this point i mean with that weird segment last week that led to the i mean i understood why they did it when it went to the adam cole and jeff thing but the segment itself was like what the hell was that and then this gets announced as like an offhand announcement part way through the show like, guys, you're putting on a tag tournament. Explain the tournament. It's not hard. Anyway, apparently I'm the only one who's upset about this. <sighs> Sting and Darby Allen take on the pain maker Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara in a tornado tag. Sammy and Darby fight outside at the beginning, leaving Jericho and Sting in the ring essentially to joust with bats. Mm -hmm. Sammy and Jericho get control early on Sting, though. Jericho got a chair, took both guys down, then they work over Allen on the outside. They threw him at the steps, but Darby flipped over the rail, but seemed to kind of hit a little short and nailed his lower back on the rail, but they used it as I I, I don't know if it was intentional. If that was intentional, that was a hell of an intentional spot. If it wasn't intentional, ouch. But anyway, um, they started to beat Darby down outside the ring for quite a while. Some fan actually, I don't know if you if this was commercial or in picture, you saw this, but some fan held back Darby's arms while Sammy slapped him, but then Darby shook off the fan like hard, right? It just seemed like such an odd spot. Mm-hmm. Um, they kept beating down Darby until Sting showed up with a chair. Jericho beat him down with a fan sign. They continued the beat down on Darby, including a Sam- including Sammy hitting a springboard cutter off the guardrail. Um, Sting got back in, though, and his team took control again. They took down Jericho and Sammy with big moves, and then they set up two tables outside and a ladder in the ring. And they put Sammy on the table. Darby climbs up the ladder because this seems like his natural spot. But no, Sting climbs up. He's like, nope, nope. I'm doing the jump and he makes the jump and he doesn't make the full distance and his mouth collides with Sammy's knee and says something like, oh, fuck. When he hits it, the second table didn't break. The first table did. Um, Anyway, uh, Sting should have gone a little higher and jumped a little further. But anyway, back in the ring, Darby hits Jericho with the skateboard jump for a near fall. Jericho throws him into a ladder, beats him down with it. Darby gets a brief flurry, but Jericho counters the coffin splash with the skateboard and hits the Judas effect. But Darby rolls out of the ring. So Sting comes in, goes for the Scorpion Death Drop. Jericho reverses into the walls. Sting gets Jericho's bat to break the hold. They trade finishers and near falls until Jericho finally taps out to the Scorpion Death Drop. Yeah, so... Again, this is my number four match. Uh, it uh, that missed by Sting. My goodness! Like when I saw it, I'm like, "That's too far. That's way that those tables are up way too far. Like, like, like those should have been adjusted. Like, there's no way Sting was ever going to make that jump. No, maybe, maybe the ladder was outside. Sure, then you can make the jump. There was no way. And when I saw him leap, I'm like, "Oh my god, he's gonna make it. He's gonna make it." And then his face hits. I'm like. Oh my God, Tony, why? Why are you, why is this happening? Why are you mm-hmm. letting Sting do these things? 
right? Like, again, concussions and all these things are real. This guy could have hurt himself. Heck, listen, he could have broke Sammy's knee at that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let, let's, let's be real here. Like uh, two people could have been seriously injured right now. And then the match kept going. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw, I, I, I saw Jericho blade himself. Pretty sure I saw him blade himself. Um, and then, and then the back and forth, like, you know, like was watching Sting's mouth bullied. I'm like, Oh my God, what the heck did he do? I was like, why are we doing these things? Like, why, why? Like when I saw that ladder gets up, I'm like, no, this is not, we should not be doing this. This is not right. Right. When Darby was there, I was like, fine, Darby, go ahead. But when Sting mm -hmm. got up there, I was like, no, 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 no. Right. That was my one complaint. I was like, guys, this is like just on, is this payback for what happened on Sunday where Sammy was supposed to, or sorry, Sting was supposed to roll out of the way. But except Sammy hit him, so this is payback for Sammy hitting him. They would never right? do that, right? Yeah. So, no, no, no. In in terms of like, this would be the revenge spot for Sting, right? Because because Sammy was able to land oh, that on okay, him, so okay, that okay. that's how it is. Um, I'm guessing that's what it was built to be, but that was set up so poorly. It was never explained that way. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, so we're poorly. just guessing. We're just guessing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, was, it was set up so poorly. So, yeah. was, and there's no other reason behind it. There's absolutely nothing else behind it, right? So like he, that was wasn't great. I mean, Sting had already injured himself on on set on Sunday. I don't know why they're even doing something like this again. Um, but hey, I mean, this was the main event. I don't know. It was okay. Um, just it it could have gone a lot worse. So yeah, it was okay. Yep. Yeah. The um the match. Was yeah, I mean that's the thing, right? You have a match like this where guys are taking all these hard bumps, they're running into rails, mm -hmm. like even even Dar. I'm not sure if that's a botch or not when he hit his lower back on the rail, because it looked like what he meant to do is flip off and land on his feet on the other side, right? And then maybe Jericho was supposed to come over and take him down anyway, but he took himself down by hitting his yeah. back on the thing. But maybe it was planned that way. Maybe he wanted it to look that way. I don't know. But the sting spot, god damn, dude, come on, I, you know, like I know. it's. Look, it's it's dynamite. I get it. You got a main yeah. event with the pain maker and blah blah blah. Do we need to keep almost killing the stars no. every week? No, like seriously, we, do we, do we don't. We don't at all. Let's no. let me turn to the Ishi Moxley match for a second. Two guys, other than the headbutt, mm -hmm. beat the living hell out of each other in a great emotional match. Both guys are gonna walk out of that one, other than that headbutt, perfectly fine, safe stuff looks great safe stuff i mean a fluke could happen anywhere mm -hmm. but for the most part safe stuff look at the uh the bucks of the elite versus yeah. uh, dark order again lots of great moves safe stuff for the safe, most part yeah. right yeah and other than keith lee almost missing Vikingo <laughs> on that jump right but again that's Vikingo. he's lucha he's gonna do that mm -hmm. stuff but other than that i mean like a lot of that stuff too it's very safe yeah but this kind of stuff trying to go through tail like, to the guy Why? is in his 60s. Yeah. The minute yeah. I'm like, dude, are you serious right now? Like, like, let Darby do it. Yeah. <laughs> Darby will make that jump. And then when Sting, Sting didn't even go to the top of the ladder, he went off like a few rungs down. And mm -hmm. I'm like, you can't make that distance from there. Yep. Like, I bet even Darby would have had trouble making that distance from that rung of the ladder. So I, I don't know what they were thinking on that. It was just brutal. All right, brutal. No wonder Sting was like, because you could tell he was in pain when he hit. Mm -hmm. uh, when he hit. Uh... When uh, when Aubrey went out, she was like, she was helping mm -hmm. with his mouth, right? She was checking him. Oh, yeah, well, his, his mouth went right into his knee. I'm surprised yeah. he didn't lose some teeth or something. I right? wouldn't be surprised. But, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, yeah. For me, it was match number four as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it, it's the guys worked hard. I'll give I'll give them that. They tried hard. Um, not the kind. And like I said, tornado tags. They're a mess, man. They're a yeah. mess. This was a mess. Um, didn't love this. Um, Agreed. I'm not going to say I hated it. I didn't love yeah, it. Yeah. And I think I was a little too concerned for the guys in the match. Yeah. Like to actually enjoy the match too much. So, but hey, I guess the right finish. Sure. Sting beats Jericho, I guess. I mean, I, I was never given a real reason to care about their feud too much other than, mm -hmm. hey, first time ever. Okay, great. Cool. Well, now it's over. And Darby and uh, Orange Cassidy can go off and tag together. Yep. And that'll be pretty great. But anyway, that was tonight's edition of AEW Dynamite. Anything on this reach the Omega level? No, nothing. No. 
me either. Except maybe Omega and Osprey talking about going to fight the again. next match. But, yeah. <laughs> it's hard for Kenny Omega not to be at <laughs> the Omega level. But anyway, other than that, no, absolutely nothing. Um, you know, I really liked the emotion out of the Dark Order and Hangman tonight. That that's by far my highlight tonight. If uh, you can only watch one thing tonight, I'll just watch that storyline. Yeah. Because holy crap, was that amazing. Um, but other than that, no, it was it was still a solid episode. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I, I never felt like I was bored or out of place in it. There was no match that made me go, wow, that sucked. Yeah. Except, of course, poor Alexi and Nicole. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> but that was Dynamite. We will be, of course, back with our uh, weekly show on Monday. And, uh, yeah, I guess that pretty much wraps us up for the night, doesn't it? So as the currently depressed great one always says... <laughs> Goodbye, everybody, and good night. Bang. Good night, everyone.